Good evening, Malden. Welcome to TMZ, the Malden Zone. I'm your host, Joe Piantadosi. Today is Wednesday, July 24th, 2013. Uh, nice to be here today in the midst of uh, this hot, humid summer we're having. A lot of people out there complaining, but uh, tell you what, it just seemed like yesterday people were complaining it was too cold and too snowy. So uh, let's uh, take the summer while we can. And um, though it's been hot, and last week was unprecedented. As a matter of fact, I was in Florida. Business, it was about 20 degrees cooler, with a lot less humidity. And uh, that usually doesn't happen in July in, uh, in Florida, South Florida. But um, it was very comfortable in Florida and very, very hot, sticky, warm here. In, uh, in New England. Actually, throughout the country, we had, we had above normal temperatures. I believe we had the longest heat wave uh, that we've had in years. The heat wave technically is 90 degree temperature plus, 90 degrees or plus, for three consecutive days at least. And I think, uh, I don't know if we had six days, maybe. I know we had several three days. We had a four and a five day, but one of the hottest summers we've had, and people are complaining, but I'll take it. It's nice to have uh, some hot summer weather. Uh, the Red Sox are in first place. Um, I think that the best, actually, the, the most winning games out of any team uh, in all of baseball, both leagues, the National and the American League. So it's nice to see. Um, John Farrell, the new manager, just seems to be what the team needed. So uh, we had a lot of young new players, excited about all that good stuff. And, um, you know, we're after the, uh, the All-Star break, and we're still... Uh, in first place, so that's that's excellent. So let's hope it continues. Uh, let me see the Celts. A lot of changes. We've got a new coach, a young uh, young guy, uh, formerly uh, of um, I can't think of the school. Is he from? Ba uh, where was the coach from? Baylor. Um, anyway, he's uh, the youngest coach in the NBA. Um, looking to build the team. Of course, a lot less players than we've had. Uh, in years past, no Pierce, no Garnett. Of course, we lost to Allen last year. Um, so it'll be interesting, interesting game season this year. So we see what happens. But uh, they're in a building mode, and this guy is here for the long haul. Um, the Bruins—they've made some a lot of uh, a lot of trades as well. We don't have Seguin. I mentioned that before. We don't have um, um, what's his name? I can't even think of names today. Um, who else did we lose? In the Bruins, we've lost, lost a, a lot of key players in the Bruins, and uh, makes it a little unfortunate. But again, um, they're looking forward to a great season. We went real far this year; almost, almost uh, won the cup. And uh, now football—that's a whole different story. I think we're up to close to 40 arrests um, in the uh, in NFL. Um, which is unprecedented, and uh, any, everything from speeding tickets to drug-related things, and of course, the uh, Hernandez thing is just uh, unbelievable. That, that uh, we have this uh, Aaron Hernandez with, with what he's done, and now it looks like they're going to uh, they're going to charge him for those two murders uh, last summer as well. But anyway, looking be interesting to see what happens, and uh, that'll be here before you know it. We'll be looking at the uh, football season. I think they start preseason games in just a few short weeks. So uh, a lot of interesting things in the sports arena. But we've got a lot of local Malden issues to speak about, and my guest tonight is no stranger. I'm very honored to have um, the mayor of Malden, uh, Mayor Gary Christensen. Nice to see you, Gary. How are you? Good, Good to see you. Good. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Great to be have you on board. It's been too long. I know it's been a while. Yeah. You were on quite a bit when you were uh, running, but now of course you're so busy. You it's the trappings of the office. Running, uh, running <laughs> the city. So how are you enjoying it? Ah, uh, I never get a chance to really stop and think about if I'm enjoying it because I'm giving it everything I humanly can. I'm at it on average uh, seven days a week. Not a day goes by where I'm not involved in some capacity. Morning tonight. Around. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's actually. Um, I'd say it starts around 8 in the morning and finishes about 11 at night. Every now and then? Yeah. Jeez, that's not... Uh <laughs> well, you know what it is? Uh, I know we're in a very highly competitive state now. Yep. All the cities and towns are chasing after the limit of resources, so I always feel that I don't want to miss anything, and that's yep. why I try to stay on top of everything. Yep. So, you know, we get to where, you know, I think we all want to go. Right. So yeah. So what's uh, what's new in the city? What's what's new and coming? What's 
What are the hot? Well, I mean, the hot button issues button. right now. Hey. We just finished up. The <laughs> Good evening, Malden. Um, this is your host, Night Joe Cantadosi. You just saw a clip from uh, my sh show just two weeks ago uh, that I did with um, Mayor Gary Christensen. Unfortunately, uh, Frank Petuccio, our executive producer, show creator, and all that, um, put that in. I was st you covered. stuck in traffic. Frank got me covered. Um, I had to leave Malden today. I had to drive to Burlington um, to pick up my car, which was being serviced, and then shoot to Winchester to pick up my guest, and then drive here, get a space. I can't bang Frank, so I'm going to have to bang. Anyway, so um, good evening, Malden. Welcome to uh, TMZ, the Malden Zone. Uh, today is Wednesday, August 14th. I cannot believe that uh, we are halfway through August. Um, the summer just flew by. I um, can't believe school is starting for some schools probably next week. Um, but a lot of schools uh, go after Labor Day. And Labor Day is uh, two and a half weeks away. I yes. uh, don't know where time flew. The summer seems like it just started. We've had a great summer, though. Beautiful weather. Um, some real warm temperatures here in the Northeast. Not a lot of rain. It's been a pretty good summer. Um, the Red Sox, our boys of summer, have uh, had a great run, uh, having a great run. No, uh, uh, the season is far from over. Um, they're still in first place. They've only slipped uh, out of first a couple of games every now and then, uh, one game every, uh, every now and then after the, uh, the All-Star break, but they're still in first, I do believe, to this, to this moment. Uh, the Yankees are coming to Boston this weekend, um, and it's their second to last time in Boston. They'll also be coming uh, mid-September, so we've uh, got a good couple of Yankee series coming up. Um, and, and, and interesting, uh, the Yankees uh, have a bad mark against them. A-Rod, their, their, their star player, their, uh, their golden boy, um, is now in this big uh, scandal with uh, the enhancement drugs. And, of course, he denied it, and he's been banned from baseball. And the strangest thing of all is he's still playing um, and because he can play while the appeal is going on. But he's going to uh, – he's supposed to be missed over a year. Um, so I guess he'll be out next year. But he's playing as we speak, which is strange. Uh, but anyway, uh, football is uh, starting up. Actually, the, the Pats played last week for the first time this season, uh, their preseason game and uh, looked really good. They played out in Philly. And uh, Tim Tebow uh, jumped in the second half and uh, actually uh, was quarterback. Uh, but, but Brady looked great. He started the game and they won. So um, we got a few more preseason games and then uh, September's right around the corner, as I said. And I'm talking about the September. I think we'll bring on my guest who uh, has been on several times with me now. Um, it's my son, Jared. and. Uh, we can go to here's my son Jared. Thank you, Jared. Yeah, nice to have you here. Pleasure son. to be here, my son. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Jared was supposed to uh, just pull it a little closer. Uh -huh. um, Jared, it's pretty funny. A couple years back, uh, my wife and son came, um, and they sat right there while I while I filmed. And uh, my guest didn't show up. I guess it was, and I dragged them on, and they were great. And I kind of had made this an annual tradition. Um, unfortunately, my wife today. Uh, Plan on being here, but she had a, uh, a business dinner that she had to attend. Couldn't get out of it. I tried to uh, have Frank tape earlier, but he could not tape the show early because he's doing some concrete cement, work, concrete cement maybe. work. So he couldn't tape earlier. And also, we usually do this later in the summer. But uh, this year, I don't know why, I guess uh, MATV is closed the last week of the month. Yes. And next week, uh, we have uh, the mayor's offices on. So anyway, today's the day, but it's... Yes. Uh, so, uh, nice to have you on. Pleasure, as always. And uh, now, lots happened since you last saw Jared. Of course, he's grown several more inches. Um, he's actually, he graduated from um, middle school. Mm -hmm. and big, uh, achievement, right big achievement. And he's starting uh, high school in just a couple of weeks. Yep. Uh, th three weeks from today, actually. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Three weeks from today. The fourth. Actually, today I took him uh, to the school. I'm going to take my uh, baseline concussion test for uh, cross country. Yep, so, uh, Jared's going to be doing cross country, um, and yeah, so I took him this morning. Jared's very punctual, much like me, for those of you who don't know. But um, he had to. We wanted to be there eight o'clock, and we left our house at seven forty, yeah, right? Exactly seven forty. And, and uh, we we were early. We were the first car in the lot, 
And I said, Jeb, we shouldn't go in yet. And you said, let's wait till, remember, 756 is when yes, you told me to go in. So we walked in at 7, and of course you were the first person. And, mm -hmm. Hey, by the way, I noticed you didn't want me to stay in the room with you this morning. I noticed that. <laughs> I was in that phase, Dad. You know. I know. I said to um, <laughs> that guy, I said, should I, the guy who was administering the test, I said, should I? I said, he said, take about a half hour. And I said, yeah, I know. I, I was surprised here? of how and long said, it took. Feel free to do what you'd like. So he said, you can sit here. And I said, I said, um, I'll wait outside. <laughs> Jared said, I appreciate that, Dad. Thank you. That was my <laughs> comment from my son. So, uh, but the funny thing is, I left his, I left you. Yeah. And I walked out to the principal's office, yeah. which you were surprised to see. I was a good person to know. She's a freshman. By coincidence, the the, the, um, the principal of the Winchester High School, I felt like welcome back harder, the principal of the high school um, in 1976, I guess, uh, <laughs> is when I entered my, my sophomore year of high school, actually. No, 77. I'm sorry, 77. Um, no, I'm sorry, 76. It was, it was, it was the, uh, the fall of 76. He... First year out of college, this teacher taught me biology, mm -hmm. and he was kind of goofy. He had curly hair, and he was a, just a goofy, you know, young kid right out of college, undergrad college, and uh, he taught in the Winchester School System science biology for one year, and then he he told me today all the details. But he he went on and uh, went to Newton schools, taught there mm -hmm. for 17 years, went on got his doctorate's degree, which he has now, and he's been principal for how, how long? long? Many years, over 10, 14 years or 14. something, when Dr. Thomas Gwynn. So anyway, talked to That's him. Nice. And then the school secretary, well, I didn't think I knew, but um, her brother, her husband's sister, husband's sister, I graduated with. Yeah. So, uh, and then also her older sister was the elementary school secretary so, and yeah. loved Jared. So anyway, I spoke to them for a while, came out, Jared was done, I dragged Jared in the principal's office. So... Before school even no, started, you, appreciate you, doing you that. got dragged into the principal's yeah. office. So, anyway, well, hopefully, not many more. So let's talk a little bit about lots going on in his life this year, and, and I'm kind of proud of him too. But you ended up um, t uh, having a good year, good, very good academic year. Let's talk about that. Well, I, I know I really don't like to. Uh, yeah, thank you, Brad. But what, yeah. what? Just talk about the courses you took. Well, th this is year. There's not much. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I thought I had to push it up. <laughs> Because um, middle school, they don't really, it's not like high school where you choose your courses or at college, but um, pretty much, you know, the, the standard science, social studies, math, foreign language, English, and um, no, I mean, eighth grade, eighth grade really was a fun year. I had a great, because it's like, it's kind of like senior year for middle school because, you know, I mean, you're done, you're the kings of the school, they all, all the sixth and seventh graders look up to you, you're, you know, and really much all you're thinking about is high school, and that's all the, t ever, all the teachers ever talk to you about is high school and what's, you know, how teach you to study for high school, how it's going to be a lot different than middle school, and that's pretty much all of eighth grade is, is getting ready for high school. And you, you took, you, now you, the courses you took this year, you took some advanced courses, right? You took yes, some. the advanced math, advanced algebra, which is pretty much um, algebra two, which is the sophomore class at the high school. And... Um, Advanced level science, which isn't really, pr pretty much all that's different about it is that we get more homework, so we don't really learn much yeah. more. But um, English yeah. was English advanced? No. No, yeah. the rest of the courses are pretty much, you know, like social studies, um, those are English, regular. those are regular. So it was, just, it was just math and science that were advanced. Yeah, next year English is leveled, as long as well as long as long as math and science. Um, and now math was tough this year. You had, math you, you was difficult, struggle. yes. In the beginning, I struggled a bit because of uh, a couple factors. But um, and then you by the end, yes. By the end, yes, I uh, managed you, to. Yeah, you, uh, you ended up with an A, straight A yeah. for the last semester, which was very impressive. I didn't even told you that. That was, I mean, he did very well academically, and uh, and it was a tough year. With, with the, the math was tough. Math was probably my one yeah. drawback, and uh, because I mean the math that we were te they were teaching us was like. I mean, some of the stuff was ridiculous, and mm -hmm. I mean, like they just. But um, and the homework was crazy too. I mean, they'd give us so much homework, and the tests. I guess it, it like kind of like high school. The tests they give us, they give us like two days notice before a test even. 
Well, that's high yeah, school and then I college. Yeah. Right? The, um, I, I have a hard time even dealing with this because I, I went to junior high. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I keep on referring to, jun to junior high, which is, is middle school, they call And then when I went, it was... Um, uh, Six through. Yeah, it was, it, was, no, it was seven, eight, and nine yeah. was, was junior nine. high. And, and in Winchester, we had two junior highs, and then you'd go to high school for 10, 11, 12. That's only one. Now, one, the old high school, which is a very large building, I didn't go to that. I, it was junior high by the time I went there. But that was one of two high school, junior highs, middle schools. And now it's the one McCall, mm -hmm. the center town, which is a huge building in itself. No, McCall, yeah, it's like a high school, McCall. And they it's, added on yeah. to it, so it's, 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 it's high pretty, school is still bigger. I, yeah, I but it, middle school looks, I mean, if you didn't know better, yeah. you'd think that was a high school. Yeah. It's so big. And it's interesting because the athletic field is what the high school plays on. Yeah. And it's because it's across town. It's, it's a great it's, field, actually. Yeah, yeah. They should have built a better field. You know, even the graduation is, so, you know, ceremony is held at the uh, middle school. But anyway, so now you're looking forward to going on to the high school. Yeah, it would be a great, you know, great big step. Uh, I'm not looking forward to being a freshman, but... Because you're a the low, yeah. low man on the totem yeah. pole, as you told me. So. And uh, they don't really expect much out of you, and the upperclassmen really could care less, care less about you. And um, But, you know, it's good, because the freshmen, you know, you just go in, get your bearings, you know, learn the school without um, yeah, getting on everybody's radar. Okay. You don't much, make much of a ripple effect. So this year, in addition to his studies, um, you, you, you ventured into something a little little different for you, a little out of the ordinary, and, and you ended up embracing it very well. You tried out for the, the school play. Oh, yeah. I, I, um, every year, well, no, three times a year, there's this um, program, the Winchester Cooperative Theater. It's a great program. It's for, um, there's three classes. There's the fall class or program. Yeah, fall program for middle school kids. The su spring program for elementary school kids and the summer program for everybody and each one of those they do a play spring is just for the uh spring is for elementary kids oh, yeah, and okay. sixth graders okay no, no. Alam the, the the spring play is usually like a classic fairy tale like they did cinderella sleeping beauty little mermaid, little mermaid yeah. um willie walk in the chocolate factory this um this fall one which is the one i auditioned for um is more like a broadway musical like um they're doing High School Musical this year. They did, well, Oklahoma was what I was in. And um, they did Footloose one year. So, like, um, well-known Broadway musicals. And the summer is pretty much potpourri, potpourri whatever. Um, yeah. Like, they did Shrek this year. Well, the interesting thing is, so, um, un unlike when I went to school, it's, it's not really run by the school. It, no, it's, it's independent. Um, it's Kath independent. Kathy Alexander is no stranger to Malden, actually, because she's the... She wears two hats in the town of Winchester. She's the executive director of the Malden Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. which your mother, my wife, happens to be a board member of. Yeah. I've known Kathy for many years. And she also does this Winchester Cooperative Theater. And um, so it's, it's the middle school, if you will, um, drama program, yes. right? It's, that's I mean, what that's is. what they do with productions in the middle school auditorium. Yeah. So I've known Kathy for many years, and ever since Jared was eligible should say i want your son and she's you know very funny about it and i'd come home and tell jared i saw mrs a as they called her and yeah he's like i don't want to do a play actually i did try to audition for it in sixth grade but i missed the audition the first yeah. day and the next day i got um fever that's right yeah. that's right you, you so said i figured it, wasn't it was meant to be. yeah it meant yeah. it wasn't meant to be um and then um my wife being on the board with her and she'd say i want your son i want your son i think it'd be good so um pretty funny and i ran into kathy i think just before the auditions and she said the auditions are x thank whatever day and so you and i were my dinner that night together alone and, and i said oh by the way at outback yeah, in burlington and i told you i said auditions are coming up and you said um yeah i don't think i'm that it and said, what's the play oklahoma we talked about it he said, something very interesting to me if you remembered you said is there a villain is there right. a bad guy well, i've always been fascinated with the villains of every story every movie every tv show every cartoon every, yeah every it made me laugh because you asked me about villains yeah and i've always, I've always wanted to play a villain or ah. yeah the antagonist and he's such a nice kid so it's such a uh, different role for him. but anyway um you had said to me uh and i said geez you know what i there there is i think i saw oklahoma a long time ago mm -hmm. you know they all blend I, i'm yeah, sorry yeah, every really. musical is 
Carousel and, and, and they're, they're all like the same, yeah. more or less. They all had Shirley Jones in them, too. Or, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so, so I said, yeah, you know, I think there must be one. And but we kind of changed the subject. And you went home that night, wasn't it? You looked online? Well, yeah. And I, I eventually, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking, I want to know more about the play. So eventually, I just got up in the like, middle of the night and like, looked it up. Good thing mom wasn't around. I know. She, she, she was yeah, home visiting she was your life. grandfather. Yeah. She wouldn't have been happy if you were up <laughs> in the middle of the night, you know, <laughs> researching. But anyway. Um, but I found, I read um, a summary of the, the uh, play and the ca characters. And um, I, came, I, want, I came across one character, um, his name, uh, Judd Fry. And I was in, interested by him because he seemed to be the um, rival or the antagonist in the play. Okay. So I thought, to, you know, I thought just because of him and I... I thought to my, I thought, well, well, you know, what the heck, I'll try out. So. And you had to. Uh, we had to do, um, choose a monologue and say it in front of Mrs. A. We had to sing the Pledge of Allegiance. Sing it? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, we had to, um, not the Pledge of Allegiance, the um, <laughs> National Anthem. That was from this morning. <laughs> yeah, the National Anthem. Um, and we have to do a dance routine, which they teach us previously, and then. The music director, the dance director, and Mrs. A all combine notes, and then they decide whether well, or not you're in it. But she pretty much holds absolute power, so she can, you know, say whatever she right. wants. So, and um, but you said from day one you were going to try out. Yeah. And you wanted the Judge Fry role, but oh, yeah. I guess what she does is she. Well, she double casts the play because it's usually... But even you don't try out for the role, right? You just try out and then she will no, cast yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So usually, no one says, I want this part. No, you, you try out and then usually it's like a couple of weeks before you get your part. Like right. she'll have us read different scenes, you know, she'll try so-and-so in this part, so-and-so in that part, and eventually she'll make the final decision. Actually, she does allow auditions like the day before she chooses mm -hmm. so she can get, you know, a clear picture. Right. Cause usually by then she knows, but she just... Wants one final. So, and, and mom had a great line, which when you said you wanted that role. Well, she said, you know, well, don't expect anything. Because even though I'm an eighth grader, which is the highest, the eighth graders get all the leads. I mean, usually the eighth graders have been doing it for so long. Never, this is my never, first right. time doing it. So you so remember mom's yeah, line? Yeah, she said you could be a shrub. She you said, know. you know what? You'll probably be a shrub. And, and you're going to, you know, be the shrub and be the best shrub you can yeah. be. No, I said be the best shrub you can be. But she said, you know, you take the role as a shrub and just yeah. do it. Uh, but he ended up trying out. He, he he made it clear that he wanted the Judd Fry role. Yeah, and I, I when she gave me that role to read, I like went. And actually, had my mo mom helped you know helped me, and I, and w I watched the old movie. I watched the new one with uh, Hugh Jackman. Yep. You know, learn more about the character. And I tried out for it, and then I got a. Uh, you got single cast, and she yeah. normally double. If if anyone knows about it, well, what she normally does, there are many performances. There's four performances. Wasn't there were a couple early in the week too? But no. um, well, there's only four professional right, performances. Right. Okay. Four performances. So she has two. Two are for one cast. So there's the main character's name is Curly. So she'll cast two Curlies and two law, female Lawrence. leads. Two pretty much every single part is two. Uh, most major parts. But her comment so. was that no one else could even hold a candle to what that she told us. Uh, and she she single cast you and it's probably one, and she's done this for over thirty years and it was the only time. Well, single cast doesn't necessarily mean that you're amazing. It just means that nobody else could be that yeah, character. Right. And it was it was it was a lot of pressure on you because um, if you had, God forbid, gotten sick or something. Yeah. Then who would? Right. Yeah, that's another, another, another study. Yeah. And, so anyway, so he did the role and he he knocked everyone's socks off. Did a very good job. I really had fun. I enjoyed it. I know you enjoyed it, which was a good thing, and you really enjoyed it. And and who knows you and then. And then, uh, so right after that one, okay, uh, oh, yeah. our church had a uh, little little Easter time production. Yeah, they, they did too. They do a Christmas and Easter production. I was in the Christmas. That's right, you were. I was one of the wise men. Right. They, they, do, they reenact the uh, birth of baby Jesus. The nativity. Yeah, and I was. In St. Um, Lillian Parish in, in church in, in, yeah. in uh, Winchester. I was one of the wise men. And we weren't there, unfortunately, for that. Yeah. We never saw the, the, the video. We were, we were talking yeah. about it. Well, yeah. And then, um, but you, you did it Easter. We were there yeah, for Easter. Yeah, the Easter to do the crucifixion of... Uh, and you tried out. And of course, I don't really try, they don't really well, try out. You just sh whoever shows up. You show, but, I mean, there was a lot of kids that were there. And, again, you know, we thought maybe you'd be a shrub or you'd be a shepherd or something. And uh, Well, there weren't shepherds at Easter. There was... I don't no, know. No, there, no, there were, was no shepherds. No, there were, well, there were townspeople or whatever, yeah. whatever. 
and he comes home and he tells us he's Jesus. He gets cast as Jesus. So, and he did a great job, and it was a very, uh, very good, I mean, it was really amazing. Mom and I didn't expect the performance, and mm. he has to care. Matter of fact, he came home one after one of the practices and said, my God, he said, the cross is so heavy. I know, it was <laughs> like a workout. But it was funny because it's, the line is yeah. it's a heavy cross to bear. <laughs> but uh, you did a great job without the beard or the, obviously the hair, but he was a great Jesus, and he ended up dying. So he had two roles, and they both characters died. Yeah. Uh, and, and single, you know, Judd and Jesus. So, um, and you did this, you decided to do the summer one as well. Yes, the summer one, which is, it's more like a camp than a program, because they have, there's four sessions, there's four weeks. And the first session, like, th there's drama games, like, for the kids who are only, because you can choose to either do one of the sessions or all the sessions or as however many as you want. And for the kids that are just going to be there, for that week, they do a Saturday Night Live skit and the Friday at the end. Yeah. Like they did, we did the Debbie Downer skit one yeah. week. You know, all the well-known, the Will Ferrell with the cowbell one, all the yeah. well-known skits. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's like improv. It was, yeah, it was, exactly. And, and uh, Mom and I got to go and see a few of them, which were good. Yeah. And but, then, then, but then they kind of, at the same time, are making this musical that will be performed at the end of, as the finale to the camp. And this year was Shrek the Musical. Last year was Mulan. This year... And um, it's kind of the same Four performances. Yes, yeah. for it's kind of the same deal. I mean, it's it's much um, much quicker because we literally only have like a week or so to get. Two had like two weeks. Two yeah. more than two. But we didn't like get our official blocking until the Monday before. And you wanted, and it, it was an elaborate production. And it was a great production. Yeah, it actually went really well. Um, you know, Oklahoma was probably a little more elaborate with set design. Yeah, and Oklahoma and was probably more professional because it took longer to. But um, so. you again wanted a small role. You were hoping or small, for a small like I, I well, it's not really a smaller role. He's yeah, but I wanted to be the um, I don't know who, if you've seen the movie Shrek. Uh, the uh, Lord Farquaad. He's a little um, evil king, and uh, or not I, really I king. Was, I always had a hard time pronouncing that, so I'm glad you. you yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so, well, obviously, my the biggest problem was my height. He's supposed to be like three feet tall. And you're six feet tall. Yeah, and. So I actually, I really wanted to be him, and I even kind of lobbied for the... Uh, for the role. Yeah. But um, she, she put me in as uh, Shrek. <laughs> and originally I was kind of overwhelmed because I was I'm doing... Upset. Yeah. I was doing swimming. swimming. I, was, I had to run every day for cross country. I had, you know, every, every day was like a whirlwind. Month of July was... Month of July was very busy. Yeah. And I, I was actually, I was really upset in the you beginning. Right, but yeah. now... I mean, after going through it, I, you know, there's no other role I could have been. Because I actually, I had um, 280 lines to memorize. Judd, I had only 60. Wow. Yeah. And, and in two weeks, you memorized yeah. that. And you, yeah. It was. And you were off book in about a week or so. We, well, less than two weeks, obviously. Yeah. And it was a great performance. And again, he blew our socks off. He was just, he did a great job at that. So who knows? You know, maybe, maybe down the road, uh, a career in, uh, in, 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 you know, not that, I mean, you know, at 14, which you still are right now, you know, the world's an oyster for yeah. you. So that, now, you mentioned something else you were doing at the same time, and, and it, well, two other things, the sports end of it, you were doing swimming. And yes. On a swim team. And uh, so there were meets the whole month of July, a meet every week. Every Wednesday, except for one, there was Monday. one Monday before the championship. And then a big championship, and you, so how many events did you compete in? You, you well, I competed in about three events per meet, and there's about four, maybe five meets. So about, excuse me, 12 to like 15 events, including the championship. And, and, and you, the, 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 I know them well, but what, what events you was it? The, the 50, 50 freestyle, freestyle, the 50 back, and the backstroke, 50, backstroke. 50 and yard we're talking. Yeah. And usually um, a relay. A free, you, usually I either do a, free, a 25 free, which is one length, right. or a 25 back. Now, there's, there was no 100 yard. So all, 50 was the longest? No, because this, this is a, like, it's middle set. It's like for everybody, so they okay. wouldn't have. They didn't have 100. I okay. believe, actually, that 50 yards is the length of an Olympic size, one length of the Olympic size swimming pool. Yeah. And both of these are obviously smaller pools, so it has to be two lengths. Okay, um, so you did the um, uh, now, now. So you did five uh, fifty yard freestyle, right? Yes. 
and you came in first in all five, yes, right? Yes, including the championship. And then you did, uh, so you did five 50 yard backstroke. Yes. Little, you, I, think I got first place in all of them except the championship. And you got third. Third, which is, you know, not that good. It was, it was good. He's a, he put, but they still be a good. I mean, they were kids that were older and bigger and taller. Yeah, because I was in the 16 under category. Yeah, you were 14. Yeah, 14 so. And then the relay you did, so you, and you did five relays, too. Yeah. I, I don't remember which. And I think I, I, we either came in first or second place. Yeah, every relay. Team. Yeah. yeah. I think only one you came in second. But our, our whole individual swim team came in third championship, which is a little disappointing, considering it was at our... Uh, yeah, well, the actual meet was. But, it, but it, you know, you... You got a lot of points this year. The, the team, I, the knee. boys on the Winchester Swim and Tennis Club, which is the one I belong to, outperformed all the other mm -hmm. boys on the uh, which is great. other teams. So now high school, high school does have a swim team. It's in the um, winter, so it starts December. Or is it Must January? I think I think it's December, December or January, definitely. So probably before you go for the Christmas break, probably. it gets underway. And yeah, because they probably want us to probably want us to like practice or something yeah. over. So, um, excellent. You're looking forward to that? That's oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to yeah. um, Hopefully, I can do it all four yeah. years. And you really want to swim all four years? That's great. Yeah. Is, it, is it only offered for in the winter for all uh, four for years? Boys. For yeah. boys? The girls' swimming is in the fall. So boys is in the so winter. So, the boys and girls, so it's two separate yes. teams. They don't have the joint team like you did in no. the club. Okay. They, they may do one. I don't know. But probably in, not. In addition to that, you, you, you're doing cross country. Yes. What, but that's for the fall, right? Yeah. And cross country can help with swimming because it's obviously the whole cardiovascular system and helping your endurance. And I have, usually I run about uh, a mile and a half, two miles every day, which really in cross country terms is not that quick at all. You mean a couple three mile days though? Well, yeah, in Ohio I ran three miles, um, but yeah, the first practice is a week from tomorrow actually. That's yeah, right. Yeah, a week from tomorrow, and my, he's actually confronted with the coach. Well, it's funny because yeah. uh, it's almost like welcome back, Carter. Uh, the coach was also uh, the coach when I was in, in school many years ago. So uh, there's not many teachers or coaches that are that. I mean, there's a handful. That they had the English department is one, mm -hmm. the principal, um, a lot of relatives of, of yeah. people that I knew. But it's nice that these goes to the same. Much like Maldonians do the same thing. A lot of Malden people. Um, you know, there's, there's it's tradition too. It's mm -hmm. nice that that families and different generations go to the same yeah. school and graduate and all that. So, um, but, all, but all good stuff and uh, keeps you busy. It keeps yes. you, and you, your summer reading, you've done some summer reading too, which is. Yes, I, uh, well, it's, I, I love to read. That's one thing. And I, I read, the, the two school books that we have to read are The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is a classic. It's Oscar Wilde, he wrote The Importance of Being Earnest. And I read that, that was good. And, um, I, I've yet to read a graphic novel about, um, called The Complete Persepolis. It's about the Iranian Revolution. And so, I mean, I started reading it, but I've got into it. But I'm reading um, uh, Stephen King. I'm a big, fa I'm a big uh, fan of him now. I've read, yeah. I'm reading a lot of his books now. And uh, I know you, but in, in, the, in the order that he wrote Yeah, I, I have a little OCD in me. I, I, I don't know where you get that from. Yeah, I have to read them all in the order they are published. And I, I, my favorites, I love, um, I don't know if you've, uh, Salem's Lot it was amazing. It's, it's um, the Stand was amazing. The Stand is 1,400 pages. That was a long book. It was well worth it. And um, yeah, just really, all of his books are amazing. I haven't read one thing that hasn't been good by him yet. And uh, so, which, wh wh what are you up to now? now I'm, I'm reading the first in his um, Dark Tower series, which is his kind of, uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Modus operandi? His okay. uh, epic work. Now, Carrie, did you read Carrie? Yes, Carrie, Carrie was, was the first, first book he book. published. Yeah. And so Carrie was good. And they're actually coming out with a. Uh, no, a movie, a um, remake of it in uh, November, I think it is. John Travolta was in here. Yeah, he was in the old one. And uh, Julianne Moore plays is playing in this new one. She really? plays the uh, the mother. Wow. And, um, um, and you're also going to go see Steve? Yes, because so he's, he's coming out with a sequel for The Shining, uh, Doctor Sleep. It's about, if you've read or seen The Shining, that's about the kid who has the power, The Shining. It's how red he's... Red rum, red yeah, rum. When he's um, grown up, how he's using his power, and it's... It's one of the most anticipated books of the fall, definitely. And he's actually, he's coming to Harvard Bookstore. My mom and I are going to go see him. I wish he could come, but he's going to be away during that uh, the end of September. day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, excellent. And, um, of course, he's a, he's a uh, New England native, lives oh, in yeah. Maine. He big Red Sox fan. Big Sox fan. He's always yeah. at the Sox game, which is interesting. 
So, um, so, so, so you've had a real busy side. Of course, then you mentioned Ohio. Um, that's where your your cousins and your mom's side are. Your mom's yeah. side. And we had the whole uh, the whole clan up there. Yeah, Irish side of you. Yeah, yeah. the Irish. And you had a good good few days there, and now you got. Yeah. Now we're going south to, to see, see uh, your, your grandmother, mother, yeah. my mother, and, and your sister, probably and my sister yeah. in Florida, which would be nice. And um, so, and then, back, and then we're going to the Cape too for one yeah. and then one last trip. And, and you've been working too. You've been working yes. a little bit at um, or your shop in Winchester, Levin Thompson Street. Levin Thompson. I like that. Good plug. And also a couple farmers markets you did. Yeah, we do. I did one in um, Woburn, and um, one in Winchester. One in Winchester, too. obviously. Yeah. We do three. We we won Beverly too. You haven't done the Beverly yet, but so you've had a real busy, productive summer, and yeah, and and I enjoyed it. You fun. get up early, and you you have a full day, which is yeah. good. And you know, a lot of kids are bored in the summer, and, and it's so nice. I haven't. I don't think you've had time to be bored. Number yeah, one, no. which is a good thing. And, and you haven't been watching much television at all, which has probably been the best. So no, I haven't watched uh, TV since uh, the last day of school, actually. Yeah. yeah. Or not like a TV show, I should say. Yeah. So, uh, not that we're, we're telling you not to, but you're just yeah. too busy to do that, which is all good. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, I don't want to put you on a spot with anything, but um, the uh, the Jaws. Oh, you, I don't even remember it. You don't remember now? <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, I don't. It was pretty funny because he memorized. Cause I, I, the, I mean, the monologue I chose was Robert Shaw's in the jo in Jaws about the U.S. Indianapolis, USS Indianapolis, which is the course of one that was... Um, Torpedoed. It was delivering parts of the um, Hiroshima bomb, and it was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine. And their mission was so secret that the the high command didn't even send rescue out to them for many for many days. And they were many of them were killed by sharks and uh, were drowned. Pretty yeah. much, it was a horrible, yeah. horrible event. That was a great soliloquy, and you. I really, yeah. Memorized it and. Uh, yeah. And it's it's the bigger boat, right? It's the, the line in there is you need a bigger boat? No, that's oh, that, Roy right. Schneider says that. Okay, oh, which is Robert Schneider doesn't say that. What was the line that, that Robert Shaw says that, that there's one famous line in there now? I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of okay. famous lines anyway. in that one. Um, <laughs> so I was going to try to put you in the spot and have you do that. Yeah, I, honestly, I forget it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, now additionally, though, you, you've been up on uh, one thing you do to follow is the news. And, oh, yeah, and, I love and you, the. You uh, love Politics. I, I haven't really watched the, haven't kind of watched the news that much so yeah, far. Just a little bit. I like saw them like a news hound. Yeah, like yeah. I like uh, I love the news and uh, news junkie. I love to find out what's what's and of course you know the biggest thing. Uh, I haven't discussed any of these news issues with you, but the Whitey Bulger trial. Oh yeah, which was uh, interesting and, and you know to me it was. I personally feel it was a waste of time and, and taxpayers' money and everything else. I, I mean, he was guilty. There was yeah, no, no question. Yeah, no question that he um, killed those. You know, they had the jury, and, and, and he knew he wasn't going to yeah. ever get out of jail. And yeah. In Massachusetts, we don't have the death penalty. Um, so he knew he wasn't going to be put to, to death, though, unless they implicated him in, uh, in, in federal crimes, which I guess they didn't, and um, or if they, they ever changed I don't know if they can go back now and make a change. I'm um, affecting someone that's that's considered a life sentence. But anyway, but he's they they can actually. They can. Yeah. So if you, yeah. If you get a li if your life sentence, you can you can be brought back for if, more. If they change. Well, I don't think if if you if you're in prison serving life sentence and they find you convicted on something else, they'll bring you back in for another trial. No, but but if they what, what I'm saying is if let's say you're in jail. I mean, all the mm -hmm. people that are in jails now. Yeah. That are serving life sentences. Mm -hmm. I don't think the government, if if, if Massachusetts ever, which would probably never happen, mm -hmm. but if they ever went back, I don't know if states do it, but if they ever went back and made the death penalty legal mm -hmm. in Mass, I don't know. I don't know that, if they, they could. Do that. They would yeah. be able to go back and do that. But um, anyway, he was. It was an interesting trial. I mean, there was some some great lines and comments, and you know, of course, they could they didn't allow the cameras in the courtroom, so mm -hmm. it would have been nice if we could have seen some yeah. of this stuff, other than artists. Renderings of drawings and the tweets from the reporters. Yeah, the courtroom. Uh, but we had that, and then of course we had all the uh, the marathon bombing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yoka. Zoka. Yeah. So was it Zoka? Zoka Zenayev. Zenayev. Um and his initial appearance in court. And yeah. Do back in as uh, Whitey has to go back in November for his sentencing. So that was all interesting stuff. And um, any other thing that was uh, major newsworthy or. Um. It hasn't been that much. I mean, all they've been talking about is the Whitey Bulger trial. Yeah, and here in Boston. At least. Yeah, and even like nationally, they're talking yeah. about it. 
and then um, there's been uh, uh, the, the, we had Shark Week. Now, since you, oh, yeah. you talk about sharks and all, uh, I've always loved sharks. And, but uh, but you're a little disappointed because uh, well, some yeah, of them I, 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 very, I feel that they're very misunderstood. And they are misunderstood creatures. And um, I remember at Jaws, one of my favorite movies, but it portrays them in a very negative light. And um, Shark Week used to be all about you know helping us understand. And you know, learn about these creatures, and you know, every, you know, Discovery Week is you know, I re the one of the the first documentary on Shark Week was about um, a, a, a giant shark that lived a couple million years ago, you know, way back. And um, the name of it was uh, uh, called Megalodon, and you know, there's all these theories that they could could be still alive, and really, we d have no idea. But they did this documentary about Megalodon, and. It seemed real. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, thinking back on it now, it was kind of like because they started out with this. Was it South Africa? Yeah, this ship ramming in South Africa, and it was. They had like um, found footage from it. I think two couples were. Yeah, on a boat, on a and boat. They, they got ran by something, and they, they had like. And, they and you think that something like that would be on some news outlet somewhere, right? But if you look it up, there's no record of it ever happening. And the marine biologist, which is like, that you should hear, like he says, he's called him to investigate, like, the weird in the ocean. It's like the X-Files on the sea. It was, you look this guy's name up, there's no record of him right. existing. It was all acting. And they had pictures that were, you know, obviously must have been fake, doctrined. But you don't even know because, I mean, they've come out now and obviously it's a, mock it was, it's a mockumentary, but it's a shame that they didn't have something in the beginning that let people know that this was fake is now people you know have been wrongly informed that you know this is the truth and well, it's funny because that has been been big news too and it has yeah. been every summer and they Chatham is a is a yeah in, no, it's, in it's the well area and it's just Shark a shame side. that they have to um, resort to that I mean ever since you know I'm sure uh, Sharknado ever since that aired you know, all the people concerned about are bigger. You didn't see that, did you? Actually, in Ohio, I saw. Oh, that. you did. You didn't tell me you did. Uh, it, was, it was so bad; it was really good. And they yeah. ma they're making a sequel to I it, heard that. as well as a movie called Ghost Shark. Yeah. Uh, Sci-fi. All these. Because now it's like a whole new craze in it. And, you know. Um, well, it's fine. You know, I remember when Jaws came out, and it was scary. It yeah. really. You talk about The Exorcist. I mean, that was right up yeah. there. The Jaws was. Was really scary. It was a great movie. Of course, Steven Spielberg is, is another one of your one of my favorite directors. Yep, and uh, he's done some great. Yeah, it works. And um, so it is one of my favorite movies, even though. It yeah, it is. And, and the music and the suspense. Yeah, just, you know, the, just a good, really the good cinematography story. is yeah. great. And and it's funny because we learned this that um, Spielberg is is someone he idolized and he tried to emulate was uh, Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock was one of my favorite directors and, so. and we didn't, you didn't know until after you actually yeah. saw a lot of Alfred Hitchcock's work that yeah. you found out that Spielberg yeah. really uh, looked up to him so uh, yeah, I've always seen? loved Hitchcock I love, I've seen his TV show yeah. his um, obviously a lot of his movies Psycho yeah. my personal favorites uh, Vertigo Rear Mom, Window Mom, you see a lot of them until you turn a certain age I remember that yeah. but, um, uh, and then we saw the Alfred Hitchcock movie that was oh yeah, with Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins was in there. That was good. It was, a, yeah. it was about um, how he made Psycho and how it was a big the making of Psycho. Yeah, because yeah. Universal didn't want to sponsor. Spon um, not Universal. Paramount didn't want to invest money in it because of they didn't think it was going to be take off. It was like a slasher film, and they weren't yeah. looked upon with yeah. that much admiration. And I mean, you know, it's like the, it was Psycho was the first like yeah. real slasher film. Right now. Um, but probably one of the only really good ones. Funny because in a, you know you're only you're only going into high school, so you've got many years ahead of you. Mm -hmm. But uh, at one point, and we talked about the the Jaws and the shark. You you thought of being a marine biologist. You really yeah. that excited you. Yeah. That's one area. I've been um, everywhere. You mm -hmm. talked about well, when you were a young kid. I think you wanted to be a a mailman. I think that was one thing that intrigued you. Mailman or a paper boy? Then I want to be a paper boy. One. I think you wanted yeah, to be all those paper boy. Well, I want to be a, a fireman, a policeman. Yeah. So, but but I've heard marine biologists talk yeah. about a bit, and then uh, a, a a a writer or a playwright or yeah. something, or a director, or maybe now the word actor I've heard mentioned, uh, maybe a, a a professional swimmer or something. I mean, yeah. all these things, or just a a bakery worker, right? Or or, or you know, to work in the company, which is the family business. So, 
We'll ask you next year. Every yeah. year, I'll see. every. I mean, I'm still trying to figure. I don't even know what. I, I don't even know what's out there it's yet. It's great so. that the the world is an oyster. You can, yeah. You can decide, and you, you know, no gu guarantees, and you know, reach, reach mm. for the star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, who told you? Who? Uh, Regis Philbin. Regis Philbin, when you met Regis. Good friend of my dad's now. And speaking of Regis, I'm going to see him next week, but he is, um, his new TV show plug. is premiering um, Monday, Monday the 19th of August. Um, there's a new uh, cable network. Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports 1, and it's, it's premiering this Saturday, um, August launching, 17th, like, launching yeah. the network. And one of their hit one of their biggest staples on, on, the, on the network is going to be Regis Philbin hosting a show called The Crowd Goes Wild. And it's um, going to be a live show Monday through Friday. He does best on live TV. He's a sports fanatic, loves sports. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be five to and six, one hour. Big Notre Dame fan. Big Notre Dame fan. And, and he's got a... And basically, the, the uh, concept of the show, the format of the show, is going to be much like The View. And he really created The View type format. Yeah. And, and it's so funny because the view is now, because Barbara Walters took it and ran with it, and he'll tell you that um, lovingly. But um, he loved that banter, like mm -hmm. we're doing now in that talk. Um, so it's going to be a round table with, with basically, I think it's four expert, four, four different professional Has sports. Has he said yet who they're going to be? Uh, he didn't know. Well, um, he, th yeah, they, they, no, I think they've announced. I don't know any of them at this yeah. point, but I'm going to be at, at his uh, premiere show next week. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, but I think there might be a revolving. Might be different people yeah. be doing it, but um, but he's the only broadcaster. No, he's the only yeah. professional. The others are more athletes, uh -huh. or, you know, sports writers. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But it's five o'clock, and it's actually going to it's gonna, going from August nineteenth to the Super Bowl. Uh -huh. And at that point, uh, the network will make a decision, and we just make a decision if they want to continue. So, um, but he's looking forward to getting back on daily television, and it'll be interesting. Uh, but he gave you some great advice, and, he, and it's funny because he compared you to Spielberg, which was interesting. He, he said, so he, he told us a Spielberg, Spielberg story when he first met him when he was young, and he said... Doing he, the uh, Joy Bishop show, I think. Yeah, Joy Bishop show, and he said, he was in the audience, Spielberg, and he said, he said, reminds me of that look in his eye. Of, but anyway, so, um, anyway, uh, anything else you want to re talk about, or newsworthy, or anything about... Uh, Any good... Uh, TV shows or movies lately? Have I seen any? No. I, uh, well, the, these, these two, so like, um, couple, my mom is hooked up. My, my, um, oh. my mom, your wife, is hooked yeah. on uh, Homeland. Homeland, she's been watching. Yeah, she's, I mean, it's won so many rewards, and I actually may watch it at some point, but it's the same guys who made uh, 24, and actually one of them wrote in the X-Files for a little bit, which is one of my favorite shows. Um, but yeah, it's, my mom loves it, and she, um, she also likes, um, once Upon a Time, which is on ABC. Yep. Lot of, some Lost creators wrote that. Um, she loves the Bravo and the... Uh, oh, yeah, those, those yeah. reality shows. Yeah, the reality show. She the, loves uh, those. The, uh, the, the Real Housewives? Yeah. She, um, yeah, she, when she, yeah, if she gets into a show, she... Yeah. I'm, I'm, when I'm like a TV show, I'm like with a book. I, yeah. I watch the first episode. I got to watch yeah. all of it. And you, yeah, you don't skip around. And... and uh, I did. It, it, I, I, I like your, 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 you're almost like a renaissance person, yeah. man, young man, because you, you have so many varied interests, and it's, it's fascinating. I, I, ah, I love watching you grow up, because I'm seeing you in all different phases and things all of a sudden that you get into when you're involved like, in. I've, I loved Lost, which was, I was into this for like two sorry. months, and I, know, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm sure some of you have, have seen it. It's a I mean, it's a great show. It's so interesting, and it's not one of those shows where you just casually view it. You got to watch all six seasons of it because it's it's so it's very interesting, and the acting is amazing. And I also I, I the aforementioned the X Files, which David Duchovny, Julian Anderson, an excellent chemistry. I watched the ninth season, the two movies. It was just great, and it kind of it dragged a little bit as it went on and on. But great show too. And, I mean, hopefully they'll bring it back for something else because they haven't resolved the storyline. But, um, yeah, they're great, great TV show. And um, they actually was at a San Diego Comic-Con, which is a big event. It's yeah. for all, many, all, it used to be just for comic books, and now all the, all major entertainment, that was through some kind of panel well, there. Wasn't Regis last year honored? He was given a, a Lifetime yeah. Achievement Award. Funny, because you got hooked. Um, funny how, how, um, 
you got hooked on comic books when you were oh, yeah. young, and even and you talked about it, and that was what I think was interesting with the Oklahoma and Judd, because you always liked the bad guy. I, al I always loved, you know, like Superman, Lex Luthor. I've yeah. always loved the villains. Yeah, the Joker. And I remember Doctor when you Doom, were real little, we used to rent movies, and I, and I wouldn't watch unless there was a bad, bad guy. guy. And I remember like Dennis the Menace had a you know Home movie. Alone, obviously. Home Alone yeah. had the bad guys, and you know, is there a bad guy? You were just a little kid. It was kind of funny, and that's you know. Uh, now don't turn into a bad guy. Just you know, you can you can <laughs> portray one or you can uh, like them. But um, so anyway, so um, so uh, you, but you're looking forward to the summer. You you love fall, which, which I, 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 I like. I love Halloween. I mean, it's nice. I love I love fall because I mean, my birthday's on the last day of the first day of winter, last day of fall. Winter is, solstice. Winter solstice. So, you know, depending on what time it started and the day I was born, I'm either a fall baby or a winter baby. Um, but yeah, I, I love Halloween. I love that feeling in the air. It's the be weather's it's amazing. Okay, yeah, crisp. The leaves turning. But I, I don't like the whole going back to school. school. But you love school, though. But, you, but it's yeah. nice, you know, and it's funny. Uh, I tease because uh, so many parents are saying today, and many of you are probably saying it now, too, <laughs> I can't wait till they go back to school. We only have one child, and... You know, it's nice having you be free and be around. They, though you've been busy, but it's nice knowing that you're home and you can stay up late or you can, you know, be around to see us. And um, I'm not gonna miss staying up late. Yeah, I know. Um, but uh, but you're pretty good. I mean, you 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 know how much sleep you need, which is a good thing. Yeah. You know, and you don't need a lot of sleep, which is even better. Unlike a lot of teenagers that you that sleep, and even some adults that like to sleep for long hours. Um, but uh, you're more like me, and probably the bake. The baker in you. Yeah. My dad I, never. Slept. I cannot sleep when there's light outside. I mean, the earliest I've ever woken up is probably like eight or eight thirty, and even that's really late. Early, for latest, me. you, you latest. Uh, what yeah, I say, early. I'm sorry. The latest. I mean, I mean, even that's really. I don't late remember for you me. sleeping late. Yeah, on. that. Yeah, I mean, because usually I like lay in bed for an hour. So read, I, yeah, stuff. read, yeah. watch TV. I love your line too. You like to relax when you wake up. Yeah, you don't like I, I don't like to. That's why one thing about school because we have to leave by like seven fifteen. And I, I mean, I don't want to get up at five and lay in bed because I'll fall back asleep. But <laughs> six, you know, I usually I I try to allow myself at least fifteen minutes of just lying in bed because I get right up at six. I usually have like a headache the rest of the day because I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm, I'm resting and like when you when you work at the bread shop, you've been the early morning. Well, yeah, like yesterday I had a very early morning. That was yeah. I get you scheduled next week for early morning too. By the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, what else did I want to mention to you? Uh, yeah, it's funny. Punctuality. I am. Yeah. I mean, I, even it, I am. It's. What's amazing is is mom and I aren't punctual at all. Not, not even. Not at all. You are. You are. Um, to me, so I punctual. mean, to me, there's no on time. You're either early or you're late. I, I love to be early because if you're late, you miss stuff. You know, early you get all the fun and excitement, and because I try to allow myself, I get ready. Like, if we're supposed to leave, uh, like, um, let's say we're going somewhere at 6, I'll take a shower at, like, 5, and I'll make it, I'll be done by, like, I, I time it so I'll be done by quarter after, take, like, 10 minutes or so to get me ready and get dressed, and then, like, another 10 minutes for me to relax and, <laughs> you know, See, so my I time it how I, you know. My problem is, is twofold. Well, first off, well, your schedule is... If, if I have an extra 10 minutes, I'll jump on something and do something yeah. that that will take you know 20 minutes to do yeah. and I shouldn't have done it but I to sit idle for those 10 minutes that you wait I feel like I need to be doing something yeah. so let me do this and it's going to take me longer um, and then it's funny because mom says this all the time and it's true I, I, I much like you in that respect I, I didn't rebel as a kid which I probably should have uh, but my father was very punctual. Yeah. And your, your other grandfather, both grandfathers oh, yeah, were punctual. Yeah, very punctual. Um, and I think that was the way to rebel, because my father always had a great line. He'd say to me, be early. Always leave early. And he'd say, allow for a flat tire. And I used to always think to myself. That's a great excuse. That's a great excuse. You can be late for anything in the world with a flat tire. I mean, how many people do you know would change a flat tire and then still show up something, someplace and say, look, I had a flat. I fixed it, and I'm still early. So, um, but but gr your grandfather would be very proud of you, knowing. Well, it's hard though because I have I don't have my I don't have 
fundamental means of getting places. I have to rely but, on. But but you tell us. I meet yeah. you in the kitchen at six. So usually I'm usually morning, I'm waiting six. for you guys like five minutes. Oh, yeah, you know, seven forty this morning in the kitchen, or you'll say you want to leave for school. It's always like seven ten, seven twelve. No, because exa- yeah, cause I don't want to be there too early, but I don't want to be there yeah. too late. You like the, as a kid, I remember and mom. God, lover was always running a little bit late. I remember here in Malden, you went to a uh, friend's party. And uh, you came late, and you were, it was a gymnastics party or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, and I, and I noticed that you were maybe two years old, three years old, and you just felt better. You adjusted better when you were early. If we took you to a party and you were one of the last guests to arrive, as a, as a young kid, you didn't, as a young kid. It's like showing up in the middle of a movie. You yeah, you didn't, you didn't adjust. Whereas when you were there early, when you, the first or one of the first? Yeah, I had a ball. You had a ball, you know. and you, you melted in with everybody, which yeah. was so, anyway, um, also, t- you know, time is running. It's, it's pretty funny because we have six minutes left. And this morning you said something very interesting to me, which I thought was hysterical. Because uh, up until a few days ago, we thought Mom was going to be joining us. Oh. And you said to me this I morning. I wondered if the two of us could carry a show Carrie, together. you used a great line. You said, Dad, do you think the two of us can carry the show? For an hour, and I think we, we did fairly yeah, well. We did. With, uh, we've, got, we've got about five minutes left. Yeah. Um, and so far, so good. We had no callers, though, today, but... Um, Frank, are you the only one in the uh, control room tonight? Is Ed with you or anybody? Frank? Hello, Frank. Okay, we got one minute. The clock says five. Who do you got in there? You got Ed in there. I see Ed. Well, I want. Oh, we have uh, Mrs. Matuccio too. Oh. But I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Matuccio for both being here. We have Ed in the control room too. We have one minute left. I want to wish everybody a uh, a happy uh, rest of the summer. Happy Labor Day. Since Happy Labor Day. Um, summer technically doesn't finish until the 22nd yeah, of, uh, of September, so we've got a, more than Finishes a month. for me when school starts. I'm going to be back September 11th, 9-11. I'll be back yeah. on. Uh, not a good day, but a good... Uh, we're, we're making it a happy day with everybody. But bad memories. But uh, pleasure having you on, Jed. You were great. Good luck Thank in the school you. year. Next August, back on. Yep. We'll bring Mom, too, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And um, thank you. Good evening, Malden. Enjoy this great weather in the summer. Go Sox. Yep. And, uh, go Pats. Go Pats. Go. Rack.